Live from Market Square in downtown San Antonio, this is SA Live. We are getting you pumped and getting you in the mood for a fantastic Thursday. Those are the Crossmen, and they are the elite of the elite musicians in town. We're going to hear more about that. Just a fantastic group. And again, like you were talking about uh, in the 1250 Tees, they just got their music uh-huh. a few hours yeah. ago, and they had to learn it all together like that. Yeah, the extremely talented musicians. So a yes. lot going on on this Thursday. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. I'm Jen Tobias Chesky in for Fiona. And yes, David is right, because that's why I'm sporting the black, you know, the silver and black, because we are all excited about Manu. But it's also the big give today. It's a huge push to connect locals to hundreds of area nonprofits they might not even know about and to help those organizations raise much needed funds. And we have got, of course, all the great groups. Uh, first up, behind all of this cuteness, the Texas Chihuahua Rescue. It's a nonprofit. Why, why do you have to talk like this when oh, you have no, the no, 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 no. uh, uh, Rescue Chihuahuas. And, oh, kiss on cue. Very good, <laughs> little puppy. Ch- uh, small breeds and chihuahuas yes. from shelters, Basically, uh, yes, kill shelters? the shelters, the streets, any high kill shelters. Um, we take a lot of seniors and special needs dogs as well. Okay. Tammy Parker, Chief of Operations yes. for the Texas Trail Rescue. So who do we have today here? So this is Snow. She actually came from a high kill shelter in Brownsville. She was on the euthanasia list. Um, she's two years old and available for adoption. She's a good little girl. She's so calm. How old is she? She is. <laughs> she's two. Okay, and this is the one. This is Twitch. He's actually five months old, and he has. I'm sorry. (laughs) He's he's tiny. He's only three and a half pounds, and he has what's called shaker syndrome, and so he's being treated for it. He'll be available for adoption in a couple weeks. Okay, and then this little one who is almost, I think, maybe want to fall asleep. Yes, he's a cutie. That's Kaleo. He's He's four months old, and he will be ready for adoption next week. Okay, and you said Chihuahuas are perfect for somebody that wants to do this. Yes, they are perfect little lap dogs. You can take them with you everywhere. They always want to sit with you and cuddle you all the time. Uh, okay. <laughs> very this, I know, I know. And Twitch, oh my God, you're just precious. You are. And you said you adopted out eight? Okay. Could, yep, okay. almost 800 dogs okay, last year, and our oh, goal for this okay. year is 1,000 dogs. So um, you're, you're pretty unique in the fact that if people, maybe they adopt from you and then they say well i don't know if it's the right decision yeah we and always take our dogs back we always back. take our dogs back and within two weeks we always give you a full refund of your adoption fee as well all of our dogs are fully vetted they're all spayed neutered vaccinated microchipped heartworm tested but that rarely happens right uh, that they I, come back right, no they right. hardly never come back we have a pretty strict application process um, so we have find amazing homes for our dogs. So we we get a handful of dogs a year out of hundreds of dogs that we adopt back. What are the types of small breeds home. besides uh, chihuahuas? We'll take anything that's usually under 12 pounds. So okay. anything from miniature poodles to toy breeds, um, Yorkies, terrier mixes. He's probably a little chihuahua mix. Mm-hmm. And besides being just you know little cuddle bugs, chihuahua they're they're easy dogs to, to really take care of if you say live in an apartment or yeah, yeah they uh, don't small take space. up much space they don't eat too much but they're full of personality so you never get bored <laughs> is that true no so yeah. where did your love come for for chihuahuas where did that spark for you I well we've just loved them for a long time but we fostered one a long time ago and it started with that first special needs Aww. foster dog and just kind of escalated to now taking in all of these dogs so. <laughs> When wow. you move 800 dogs, obviously you still have a lot that haven't been adopted. Mm-hmm. Uh, that takes a, a lot of money. I mean, there's a lot of money, a lot of effort, a lot of food, a lot of, a lot of everything mm-hmm. else, and, and as well as all the medical care, right? Yes, that's correct. So oh. we fully, all of our dogs are fully vetted, and our biggest issue right now is space. Um, last year, we bought a five-acre piece of property with a kennel building on it. And we've already outgrown it in a year. So that, um, and that facility is out in Pleasanton, yes, right? Yes, it's out in Pleasanton. Um, so we're looking to expand on our kennel building and make another kennel building on, out of our garage. And our treasurer, Catherine Gorton, had paired up with KM Builders, and they came out and did a uh, prints. And we're hoping to put eight new kennels, but larger kennel runs that will take, that'll house about 16 to 25 chihuahuas at a time. 
So it's wow. about 30 a month. So that's another 360 dogs a year that wow. we could save if we just had another kennel and building. You have so much. It looks like you have a lot of space, yeah. but you just have all these dogs that you're taking in, which yes. is good, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, and the other nice thing too is when you would. Okay. Okay. Do, do, do <laughs> it's very you're, 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 you're knowing how to work it, aren't you? We you should have dogs every day on the show. Well, I know. Just holding them. <laughs> and when you rescue one dog, that basically saves two because that then opens up space yep. and resources from your place, so you can go find other. Absolutely. Dogs, right? So we just keep growing and growing. And when you, uh, do you just go around to different shelters or do you kind of, you know, have the word out uh, with the different shelters? We to have say, relationships. If you get, okay, you Yeah, do. we do have relationships with other shelters, especially they know that I'm a sucker for a special needs dog or a senior chihuahua, so they Good always job. will call me. Um, but we do, we go to the other shelters, we pick up, we have a transport van and Kelly drives our transport van. So she went, when she went okay. down to Brownsville, she came home with 19 dogs um, that okay. were all on the euthanasia list. So. Well, if you would like to donate and for more information on Texas Chihuahua Rescue, go to salive.com. Don't kiss me <laughs> in the mouth and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Thank Tammy. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much for having Appreciate us. Appreciate it. Well, from dogs to drum corps, the Corman, Crossman, pardon me, is an elite group of performers and musicians. Yes, they go through rigorous auditions and rehearsals before embarking on a 60-day summer tour. They wow audiences with high energy and artistic marching performances, and that's just the start of what they do. Some of the members of the Crossmen are here to give us a taste of their great musical skills. Take it away. <laughs> Development and communications with the Crossmen and talking about what they do. This was fantastic. And they just learned yes. this a couple of hours ago, they right? They did. They just learned this just about th four hours ago, probably. Wow. Yes. I'm so Impressive. proud of them. They are, they are a very talented, <laughs> very awesome group of kids. And how many are in the Crossmen? Because this is just a small sample, yes, right? Yes. We have three ensembles. The largest one is about 155 kids. Uh, we have a smaller indoor ensemble, Crossmen Wins. They're made up of 35. And then we have a Chamber Wind ensemble and they're made up about uh, 40 to 60. How many people audition? Uh, about 1,200 kids, wow. just wow. for the drum corps itself, and only 155 make it. And so, it's yeah. not just high schoolers, it goes no. through college age, yes, right? Yes, exactly. We have, on average, we've got some kids that are starting at 15 this year, all the way up to 21. Wow. Wow, yeah. that is, that's fantastic. And these are the ones that just, I mean, live and breathe music. One mom said that she almost has to take the <laughs> instrument away from the middle of the night. It's like, yeah. please, sleep, yes, you know. This passion for music. And you have a 60-day summer tour. So what goes all into that? Yes, absolutely. It takes volunteers. It takes the staff. You, it's year-round planning, and it takes a lot of fun. So that's why we're here today. We are here to promote the Big Give SA and our Crossmen. We, our goal is $15,000. Um, and that's just a very small amount of what supports us, but um, we're doing so good. We're doing great so far. And then some of the competitions, some of the events that you have going on in yeah. the next couple of months, right? Yeah, absolutely. We will we will have a little send off for our MMX, our music uh, marching music marching extravaganza that's happening at June fifteenth, Saturday. Everybody's welcome. It's send off. It's a they'll they'll learn the show four weeks before, and then uh, we'll head off on tour June sixth June. June 16th, and then we will compete all around the nation with a, a wow. bunch of other drum corps. Yeah, one of, the, one of the moms was saying, you know, they're going up to Ohio, I think, or something. Yep. We're going to start up there, and then we're going to make our way over the East Coast, down to Texas, and then back up and end in Indianapolis at Oil, Lucas Oil Stadium. Wow. wow. So yeah, donations fantastic. help with all of everything, that. Everything, mm -hmm. everything, yes, absolutely. Well, best of luck to you. Y'all are fantastic. You sound great. So and for more information on the Crossman and how you can donate, go to salive.com and donate to Big Give SA org and search Crossman 
Productions. Thank you all Thank very, you. Thank very you much. Thank you for having us. All right, next on SA Live, young designers pairing with special needs children for a fashionable event. Meet the nonprofit putting on fashion shows that change lives. Welcome back to SA Live. Fashion Able has helped hundreds of high school design students and hundreds of children with disabilities through fashion shows and encouragement to make all dreams possible. Joining us today, board member Michael Flores, along with some designers and their models. And first of all, Michael, let's talk about what Fashion Able is. Okay. So Fashion Able is a program where we have high school design fashion, stu fashion design students are um, tasked with creating and modifying an outfit that fits the special need of the child with a physical disability. Because we talk about clothing, you know, it's made for the average person, but these modifications also can help with their self-esteem. Oh, absolutely. It's great empowerment for the, for, the, for the models. It teaches the high school students all about budgeting and working with the family and creating the outfit. It teaches them to see outside of their own world and how difficult life can be for other kids. Yeah, that's important too. And so the fashion show is this Sunday. Let's talk about the experience there for the models, for the designers, for the families of the models to be there. It and see is all one of, of our favorite events. Sorry, I didn't mean. No, it's, it's okay. It's one of our favorite events. I mean, we have parents there with flowers as as their child is going across the stage. It's such an empowerment for for the child with physical disabilities for them to be the center of attention like that and looking beautiful and all dressed up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, Mike standing by, we do have, so those are photos from last year's event, and we have some designers and some models here with us today. Oh, look at the smiles on I those know. faces. And we've got two designers and two models here, starting on my left, Alexis Guerra, designer, model Amelia, and designer Jessica Brown, and model Angel. We're going to start with Alexis. So tell me about uh, Amelia's outfit. So this year I created um, a summer jumpsuit. And the modifications that I had fixed were um, making, I concentrated on making the outfit more um, comfortable and a slip on. So it's easier for her to get in and out of the jumpsuit. And using zippers too. Yes. You said it was one of the, the keys. I have added a zipper in the back. Okay. And it looks very, very comfortable. How does this help you in other clothing um, designs? We are preparing for a fashion show at my school. So it is preparing me to um, what to do and what not to do for some outfits and perfecting other garments I had made. I had made quinceanera dresses. Wow. I had created um, pantsuits and um, okay. other things. Amelia, you look beautiful. How's it feel? I like it. You ready for the fashion show? Yes. Okay, you got your walk all, all down and everything? Yes. How are you gonna do it? <laughs> and, do, and practice the wave? Perfect. <laughs> you look beautiful. All right, Jessica, tell me about this outfit for, for Angel. Okay, so I just wanted to make him a really casual, comf comfortable outfit that he could wear just anywhere. There's actually a secret patch right here that mm -hmm. opens up just so um, mom can get to his feeding tube super easily. Okay. He doesn't have to take off his shirt. Now, doing little things like that, how does that help you in designing other clothing? Yeah, so it helps me adapt clothes that I'm going to make for myself or for anybody else just so that um, I know everybody's body is differently is made differently, so I can use that to adapt um, all different clothing I'm making. And one special dress that you're yeah. making for yourself, yes, you're kind of incorporating um, I'm actually tricks. making my prom dress this year, so that's super exciting. That's fantastic. And you said this is your third year doing yes, it, Yes, right? this is my third year in Fashionable. Wonderful. Well, yeah. appreciate it. And these are great outfits, and y'all are doing a fantastic job. Good luck with yeah. the uh, the fashion show, everybody. Jen? All right. Yes, yeah, so again, the event Fashion Able Show is Sunday, March 31st from 1.30 to 4 o'clock. Tickets, you can pre-sell uh, pre pre tickets, $5 or 7 at the door. Uh, and, of course, they are part of the big gift, so head to SpinalBifidaTexas.org, um, or we posted their website on SALive.com along with the big gift website, so you can click and donate. Thank you so much. Keep up the great work, everybody. Thanks for coming. Coming. All right, changing topics. We have a Fiesta medal, and this is Brackenridge Park. Of course, we love our San Antonio parks, and that's the one that's been around for a long, long time. Good old Brackenridge Park. Yes, the Brackenridge Park Con Cons Conservancy nonprofit is also pushing for donations with the Big Give, and here's why. $120,000 in 
2020. Can you believe that? We have such a special place in Brackenridge. It's, there's really not another location in the city because of the various attractions associated with the park, the zoo, the witty, and the net natural uh, areas. And it was donated in 1899 by George Brackenridge who had a vision to create a public space where people come from the hustle and bustle of the city and enjoy the outdoors and nature. The low water crossing is one of the most favorite places in the park, but the water has been flowing so fast now because of the rains we've had. The water table is really high, so it has been closed off for a while. And that lets you look at the cracks in the walls across the way. This area is next slated for uh, repairs. Uh, it was put in in 1917, the low water crossing itself, but the walls were done in WPA in the 1930s. So our much loved, much used park uh, needs loving care. And so the Conservancy was formed in uh, 2009, we're celebrating our 10th anniversary, to supplement what the city is able to uh, budget for maintenance and uh, repairs and improvements in Brackenridge. And so we receive no funding from the city, but we uh, are supported by philanthropy and donations from our friends. So Big Give is an opportunity for everybody to appreciate this 343-acre public park. It is really, we're learning that other places in the United States think of this park as the most culturally significant municipal park in the entire United States because of the layers of culture and history. Come take advantage of what is here and be a part of saving this park and being good stewards of it for generations to come. Hey everyone, it's JP and Crystal Lane. We're reaching out to you to help with a campaign and an organization that we are a part of, Adaptivet. Adaptivet helps our heroes when the going gets tough. With the hand up, not a hand out. Whether it's a home modification, money hardship, medical needs, and all of the above, Adaptivet comes to the aids of our heroes. We have personally supported Adaptivet because they give straight to the troops, the veterans, and the first responders. There's no middle man or hidden agenda. We challenge you to make a difference in the lives of our heroes by contributing through a donation and to volunteer one day out of the year to help on an adaptive ed project. Help those who dedicate their lives to helping others and sacrificing through their service. Go to adaptivet.org. Thank you for supporting adaptive ed. God bless. Welcome back, everyone. Those are some of the members of the Crossmen. They put on a great performance for us, the elite musicians around town, and they're getting ready to go on tour this summer and compete nationally. Thank you so much for being here, and if you'd like to donate on the Big Give, that's one of the many, many organizations. Okay, there is a free family event that's coming up this Saturday. It is the Safe Kids Day, and it's led by University Health Systems. And Jennifer Northway, Director of Injury Prevention with the University Health System, is here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right, it, it seems like self-explanatory, but tell us about Safe Kids Day. Why was it created? Well, unfortunately, unintentional injuries are the leading reason that kids visit us at the hospital. And so this event is a fun way for us to talk about how we can keep kids safe at home, at play, and on the way, and keep them out of our emergency rooms. Okay, what can families do at safe, to, to keep at Safe Kids Day? Absolutely. Well, we have over 30 booths this year. This is an event that's got a lot of our coalition members helping us um, provide some fun things. We've got some booster seats here. We're actually going to have a booster seat giveaway sponsored oh, wow. by Charity Ball Association. Yes. Okay. So we'll be giving away high back boosters and no back boosters to children between the ages of 5 and 10, weighing between 40 and 100 pounds. The child must be present. But we know that motor vehicle crashes are a leading cause of injury here in San Antonio. And a large reason for that is parents will miss the booster step, and it's a critical step. So we'll be giving those away for free. And I assume learning how to put them in Absolutely. Properly. So we'll have certified technicians there showing parents how to route the belts uh, appropriately and making sure that kids are fitting in the right uh, booster for that. Okay. Yes. Fire extinguishers. I mean, you got one in your house, but 
Who just knows how to one. use them? That's not going to put the fire out. You got to know how to use it, right? <laughs> That's right. Very few people actually know how to use them. And so we'll actually have fire extinguisher training with a live fire and firemen to help kids learn how to actually pull the pin and point the fire extinguisher correctly to extinguish a fire. Okay. Yes. Uh, smoke alarms, carbon monoxide detectors. Yes. You gotta have them. You do. And so we'll be talking to fam families about where they can go if they need a free one, um, as well as talking about how often to replace the battery. Okay, uh, some of the, the reminders for kids, not only at home, but at play, because I know a lot of times, and we were just talking about this, you know, older folks are saying, we didn't wear bike helmets, we didn't have all that stuff, but this is to kind of prove why we need that stuff nowadays. Right? Absolutely, and making sure that families understand what they can do and what kids can do to keep themselves safe. Unfortunately, a lot has changed about our environment. There's more vehicles on the road, there's more um, people are driving faster, and so you know, when kids are playing in their homes, when they're driving in the car, there's things that they need to do to stay safe and not get hurt and have to come to the hospital. And even the little things uh, that just came to mind, like on the stove, turn the handle of the, of the, the pot away yes. so little hands don't reach up and grab them. Just Absolutely. things that you, that you may not be aware of. Well, you know, we could use you at the fire safety booth this weekend. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, but we'll also have even a photo opportunity. FedEx is one of our national partners, mm -hmm. and they'll be bringing out a number 11 racing car, and you can take a picture um, oh, there cool. with the racing team. Yep, this is actually a door prize. We're giving out lots of door prizes. And that's a great events. example because race car drivers wear a lot of uh, safety equipment as well. That's so, exactly hey, right. This is a great event for the whole family going on this Saturday. And there's fun games. It goes from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Lowe's on Goliad Road near uh, I-37 and Southeast Military Drive. At the, it's to celebrate kids, prevent injuries. Yeah games, fun, prizes, like we said. It's the Lowe's at 3302 Goliad Road. And thank you very much, Jennifer. Thanks Appreciate for that. Us. All right. Good seeing you. All right. Up next, we are dining with David Elder and four helpings of Elder Eats, burgers, tortas, and over-the-top gluten-free treats. That's up next on SA Live. Pork and Bread is an authentic taste of Guadalajara, Mexico, right here in San Antonio. This is the best you can find outside Guadalajara. Their menu is simple and delicious, featuring their popular sandwich, the Torta Ahogada. A freshly baked torta gets sliced and prepared. Then, hot bean puree gets added to the bread and covered with freshly prepared garnitas. The sandwich gets cut in half and placed in a basket with a plastic liner because now it gets interesting. The torta gets drenched in a rich tomato salsa and served with sliced cabbage, pickled onions, radish, and lime. Check this out. This is their torta ahogada. This has their tomato-based sauce that they put on there, authentic flavors, and some of the people in here are saying that it's even better than stuff you can find in Mexico. So I'm super excited to check that out. You got the cabbage, the red onions that are dressed and seasoned, a lime wedge as well, and some radishes on the side. And you just, when you got the lime, you got to use it. There you go. And look how juicy that lime was. That's amazing. It has the beans on the bottom of the bread, all the bread made fresh in-house, all the meat, you see it cooking fresh. I mean, they're cooking it up all the time because they're going to run out of it because they have so many people coming in here. The torta ahogada. This is the one everybody wants to come out here and get. This is amazing. The bread's phenomenal. The sauce is over the top. The meat is amazing. If you can get it all in one bite, you're doing something right. Make that a shirt. Rojo Pork and Bread started their restaurant journey in San Antonio at the Sanitary Tortilla Factory downtown, but now have their new location close to the airport. Well, this is a project I have had for three years and a half. Yeah, it was a long journey, a lot of learning, and uh, this, it was our main goal to be more in the center of the San Antonio area, which is the airport. On their first day opening, both new and returning customers made the trip to the new location. I'm from Guadalajara, and the, the tortas that they offer here are, are even better than some of the ones I tasted over there in Guadalajara. I had the tacos. And what did you think? I thought they were awesome. First time I've ever had anything like it. Really good food, good spice, good flavor. Absolutely. I think it's the best, some of the best bread I've ever had in my life. And everything here is made fresh in-house. Well, Rojo Porca Bread uh, makes the traditional food 
uh, from Guadalajara. It's my hometown in Mexico. It's the second largest city in Mexico, and this is the most popular street food you can find there. We bake our own bread and we make everything from scratch because our goal is to uh, be the most accurate possible. If you had to give it a uh, one to five star rating, what would you give it? Six. Six. Good answer. <laughs> also on the menu, nachos made with similar ingredients. Garnitas, bean puree, tomato salsa, and veggies. Check out this huge thing of nachos right here. You got the cabbage, you have all the red onions on top, the radishes. It's all the essential flavors that you want when you come out here. Stacked up into nacho form, but they're making their chips fresh here in-house as well. Just light it up with sauce, baby. <laughs> All of that on a chip, baby. That's what's up. Woo! That was spicy salsa. This is where it's at, y'all. Their taco dishes and chili keelers dish. My goodness. Are also both dishes made with similar ingredients, just reimagined and presented differently. Once I came here to the U.S. to San Antonio to study culinary arts, I realized that we, what we are having there is a really complete dish. I mean, culinary speaking, because it has the sweetness of the tomato salsa, the acid of the lime, the spiciness, the salt on the, and the fat on the meat. So it's really a round dish. Rojo Pork and Bread is a San Antonio staple and by far one of the best restaurants in the Alamo City. Rojo Pork and Bread is one of the most unique, special, and delicious places here in San Antonio. It's a treasure. It is a San Antonio treasure. Now, we're headed to the west side for a restaurant that is making over-the-top burgers, hot dogs, and desserts. It's really good. <laughs> this is The Shack. If you're looking for a huge burger, then the big cheese is what you need. Toasted buns, four never frozen seasoned all beef patties, and four slices of different kinds of cheese all get drenched in queso. Then the top bun is added, and this monster is ready to inhale. This right here is the Big Cheese Cheeseburger, only available at the Shack. They're now open right here off 410. Look at that thing. Come on, the Big Cheese. I'm gonna try to take a bite out of it. <laughs> I don't think I can. Oh my goodness. That is real good. Owner Freddie Morales and his wife have created a fun, wacky menu that genuinely works. Elevated carnival food that will satisfy everyone in the family. We moved locations. We were on Prue and Babcock. Uh, now we're able to come over here and get our own spot. Um, a lot more room for our customers and all that. And uh, yeah, man, the shack is just a place where you can come down and get some good comfort food. And they're cranking out their food with quality ingredients, like Nathan Brand hot dogs. All right, so when you come out to the shack, they have a really big menu. I mean, you got all kinds of frozen things and fried things. They got burgers, hot dog sandwiches. I mean, just look at this tray. <laughs> I mean, this is just a small look into their menu out here, and it is all amazing. Check this one out. This is one I want to show you all right there. This is exactly what you think it is. This is an enchilada stuffed inside of a hot dog. It has melted cheese on top, enchilada sauce. I'm going to bite right into that bad boy. That is really good. Straightforward, delicious. Hot dog has a great little texture to it because they're frying it right there on the flat top. Coming up, we dive into the menu at the shack and get a look at their wild desserts. Wow. <laughs> Plus, we get a quick bite of an all vegan bakery. That's really good, y'all. Stay right here on Elder Eats. is an extreme burger and hot dog restaurant with a new location off 410 on the west side. This is a brisket barbecue pickle onion hot dog. All right, so it's like a barbecue hot dog. Now, if you're looking to be a little more health conscious this year, of course, you can do that out here well at the Shack. They have the keto burger, all right? Their buns out here have an equivalent of five grams of carbs, so you know you're making something, a healthy decision right there.
That is delicious. Hot egg on there, cheese, bacon, burger, lettuce, tomatoes, and that keto bun. That is fantastic. Plus, their burger patties are never frozen. It has chorizo, grilled onion, and jalapenos, mayo, lettuce, and tomato. What's up? Shack Riso. Their desserts are over the top. And for the dessert of all desserts, look at this thing right here, the Oreo explosion. It's Oreo churros that are stuffed. And then they have two scoops of ice cream covered in more Oreos. And where else can you go and get a funnel cake any time of the year? You guys gotta come out here. The shack now open over here on the west side, right up 410. I mean, amazing food, great desserts, great people. <laughs> the desserts are where it's at though, it's really good. Now, we're headed near the medical center for a quick bite at Miss Chickpea's Bake Shop. This isn't your average bake shop. Everything here is 100% vegan. We are 100% vegan and we use mainly organic ingredients in our products. We learned about all of the issues with the animals in the food industry. I just figured, you know, we could make wonderful things without using all of those products. And so when I started experimenting with the things and switching over my recipes, I found out that it was possible and I could make things just as good as any regular treats. Their Pop-Tart treats are next level delicious. This one out, this is a big Pop-Tart. This is a wild berry Pop-Tart. Huh? Mm. Oh, my oh my goodness. It actually tastes like a Pop-Tart. That's really good, y'all. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna take another bite. The bakery also serves up their own take on Oreos. So this is the Foreo. Foreo? Foreo. It is a gluten, free vegan Oreo style thing. <laughs> I mean, cause it's big. That's like the size of like a, like a cookie cake or a sandwich or something like that. There we go. Oh, wow. Everything is made from scratch using mainly organic ingredients, focusing on both flavor and presentation. Located right off Callahan Road, right across from Sprouts. You guys gotta come out here. It's delicious. Miss Chickpea's Bake Shop. Everything, everything, I swear. Delicious, you're gonna wanna buy it all, and you're gonna wanna eat it all on the way home, so buy like double, because <laughs> you're gonna be taking bites of everything. It's delicious, and you guys are wonderful. Thank you so much for having me out here today. Coming up, soda crafted just for Texas right here in San Antonio. Southside Craft Soda is live at Market Square, so don't go anywhere. Elder Eats is coming right back. Welcome back to Elder East here on SA Live and KSAT 12. And, and you know what? We made it, guys. We did it. You guys, we just assembled this whole thing during the break. And they're, they're awesome. With me today is Southside Craft Soda. And we are here to talk about two new flavors that you have, plus right. the delicious flavor that you can now find inside of stores. We'll be talking more about yeah, that a little absolutely. bit. But with me here to talk about more is Andrew Anguiano. And now you are the CEO and co-founder of it. And with me right. today as well is Greg Spickler. Greg, he's our he, soda maker. He makes the sodas. And yeah. he's also going to be pouring them up for today for us. But tell me, I mean, I'm holding one right now. So what is craft soda? So craft soda really is a small batch. We're really paying attention to the local ingredients, regional ingredients in some cases. Uh, really trying to make it an authentic San Antonio, South Texas style soda. And that's what Texacola is. Nice. And as you can see there, I mean, you bottle them, everything's done right here. And it's actually partnered with the Alamo Beer Company, right? Right. And you're actually, so everything, it's, just, it's like a really cool, like, synergy partnership that you have. Yeah, so Alamo Beer uh, is where we bottle our soda. We're, we're actually based on the south side off of Roosevelt and uh, South Cross. That's, that's our, our home base. That's our marketing sales office. And we have some plans in the future there, but until then, Alamo Beer has been a great partner. Greg and I have had a great relationship over there. And so we, that's actually how we came into the craft world was through Alamo Beer Company. And, you know, you guys have had Texacola uh, for a while. It's actually the one that people are familiar with now. And it's actually right. in stores now at, at Select HEBs. Select HEBs. At Select HEBs. You guys can go. I'm going to try to sip it right. right now. I'm going to go for it. And there's also quite a bit of bars and restaurants that have it. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's I like good. that, you guys. That's, that's It's kind of yeah. sweet. It, it's, it tastes like that natural, kind of that Mexican uh, soda flavor, right? Right. It's a Mexican-style cola with mm. Valley Citrus. So mm. uh, Greg will tell you, we, we drove down to Mission, Texas, got some uh, orange juice, lemon juice, lime yeah. juice. It's our, kind of our, 
our unique blend on there. And talking about unique, you have two new flavors you're going to be introducing right here, right now on Elder Eats. So talk to me about each one. So, what do we got? So uh, we have Beeville Honey Vanilla. This is our Honey Vanilla. We have uh, cinnamon, cloves, van uh, vanilla, honey in there. And yeah. You really got a real nice artisan flavor. We named it Beeville because obviously there's honey in there. Thank you, Greg. But it also is... Cheers. Cheers. It also has... It has a really nice artisan taste to it. Oh, oh yeah, it's kind of spicy. It tastes a little bit like the like like the fall. You know, it's kind of it's kind of it's subtle though. Yeah. Not too over. This is really good. And you know, I think it's great with ice cream and also mm, to, mm -hmm. to use for mix. So it's kind of our take in the in the space of of a vanilla cream root beer esque kind yeah. of thing, right? You know, and that, what you had talked about earlier, I like that you would mention that each one of these sodas kind of pairs well with an alcohol, right? So hey. if you got an adult drink you want to make, I mean, these go great with that as well. And you have one more here. Yeah, and this, so talk to me about this one. So this is Limoncito. You know, I'm from the South Side, and we love our, I love fruterias and uh -huh. lemons and limes. And so this one is based off of a, oh, of a fruteria uh -huh. lemon lime uh, drink that we've, that we've created here. Ooh. So. Oh, that's really, once again, I, it's subtle, it's delicious, but it has a lot of great flavor to it. And it's, it's nice. It's not overly sweet. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I actually, I've been digging on, on like, Sprite lately. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And this is kind of like a cooler, like, more, and it's local. Yeah, yeah. It's a natural, and everything's small batch. You know, yeah. and I always say that we're not, you know, even though there's big brands out there, right, we're not competing against them, right? We, well, Andrew, I've got eight cases. Thank you so much. We're going to give you <laughs> some time you. here in a little bit. Thank and you. we'll be right back with more Elder Eats. And thank you so much to Southside Craft Soda. All right, guys, well, this has been a great Elder Eats, and thank you to Rojo Pork and Bread, The Shack, and Miss Chickpea Bake Shop, and, of course, Southside Craft Soda, you guys. Delicious stuff, and check it out. On the bottom of their boxes, you can actually find a map to all the missions. How cool is that? That is awesome. And, you guys, we have a big announcement to make. The winner of Munch Madness, Elder Eats, all the votes are in. The winner is... I can Rico food truck. Congratulations. You're the winner. Bacon mm -hmm. Me Crazy is the backup winner. You are the runner-up. Thank you so much for everybody for voting and for going in there to eldereats.com for making this possible. And big cheers to keeping it local. You guys, thank you so much. And again, watch SC Live every Monday and through Friday, 1 o'clock, and an Elder Eats brand new every Thursday at 1.30. I'm going to drink this now. This is delicious.